Hey everyone, welcome to the Magical Healing the World podcast. My name is David, here with my lovely wife, Miss Megan. Hi y'all. And uh, man, we are so excited to bring you a very special guest today, uh, Mr. Max Reeder. He's a Qigong practitioner, a healer, and man, I've been following this guy for uh, quite a while. I've been basically creeping on him for about five or six months now. Uh, incredible content on TikTok. We'll, we'll post all your stuff at the end of this whenever we publish this, but incredible content on TikTok. Um, found him on Instagram, but I follow mostly on Facebook. Uh, just so much positivity, such a powerful understanding of the way energy works and some really cool stories of how he's healed himself. And for some reason, you know, we've just, I've been energetically attracted to all the stuff he's been put out there. And then Megan was checking him out the other day. We're like, we got to get him on our podcast. Well, I was approving <laughs> one of your posts. And it was like, you know, your story in a nutshell. And I was like, and it resonates so deeply with me. And I was like, who is this person? Right. Because you never even mentioned him. I know, I know. And we like, and I said, David was like, David, I was like, we have to get this guy on our podcast. He's like, who? And then I said your name. He was like, no way. I'm looking at his page right now. So super <laughs> synchronistic. Absolutely, man. Max, thank you so much for making time for us, brother. I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you. And I'm glad to be connecting right now. Yeah, for sure. And uh, what we're excited about is Max is going to be, uh, we're going to be trying to work together a little bit. And the upcoming, uh, as everyone that listens to us knows, we do these pretty profound, magical uh, healing ceremonies. And he's going to be a uh, practitioner of Qigong, uh, trying out with us at uh, the upcoming one in February. So we really appreciate your time and effort there too, brother. Yeah, and I'm we've really been looking for it. someone to do yeah, Qigong have. for a long time. I even have a friend that does it, and it just, there has been resistance. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I know this is meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy, to, uh, I'm happy to teach it. I don't know how other people will feel about going through it because it's, uh, it's very challenging, and you have to be very willing to transform to uh, go through the style of Qigong that I practice. But um, it's, it's, I mean, it's massively transformative. I attribute a lot of the healing that I've gone through to the way that I do it. And I didn't make it up. I learned it from a guy that used to be a Navy SEAL and then became a Mongolian monk um, where they had to hold um, one of these standing Qigong postures. Um, like, for example, one of them is this. And just imagine standing like this with your arms out, your knees bent, completely still without moving for three days. That's what, what they initiated into this order. Yes. So this guy... This guy that taught me was a, was the real deal, and uh, he's seen some amazing things. He has some amazing knowledge, and he was able to impart some of that to me that really changed the way that I practice energy. Dude, wow. that's epic. Yeah, from I mean, we'll we'll get into your story in a second, but as a high level overview, and this is just some of the things I've I've kind of just seen on your social media. But you've healed tinnitus, you've healed your vision, you healed like this leg injury, multiple things. The doctors are like, nope, you're never gonna heal this. Blah 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 blah. Exactly. They're and not supposed literally to literally all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, dude. Well, yeah, well, we'd love to hear your story, man. Take us through it. How'd you like, you know, how'd you get into energy work? You know, how'd you go through that whole uh, medical system first, your injuries? I think you're in the Navy. Yeah, go ahead, man. We'd love to hear your story. Um, sure. So can you, can you give me, uh, can you make it a little bit more specific? Because there's, there's a, a reason that I got into energy work and there's a reason that I, uh, was like, was sick to begin with. So what, let's start, with, sick. Let's start yeah. with like okay. your story, like, like what you endured and how, like all the process of, cause I get the process going to all these different healers, doctors, you name oh, it, yeah, yeah, no yeah. one can help you. Right. You spend right. tons of money and then you're still sick. Right. <laughs> but then yeah, exactly. you figured out the way to heal yourself. So like that whole shebang start with like being sick and that go through that whole process. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Well, uh, full disclosure, I've been pretty lazy for most of my life and that's, that's carried over into a lot of, uh, harmful patterns that I put myself through. Um, one of them being really bad posture for most of my life. Um, I was a very heavy gamer as a kid. That's what I have five siblings and almost all of us were always playing games. So we were hunched over and playing games as much as we possibly could, as much as our parents would let us. Um, so over time, um, we just, we developed very sedentary habits and weren't moving our body a lot. We weren't having, practicing good posture. And uh, when I was 14, my mom took all of us to the eye doctor and they diagnosed all of us <laughs> with astigmatism. Wow. And we all got glasses. And uh, yeah, so 
and I don't know, you know, some people say that it's because of the school system or like the way that we're always looking right in front of us at, at books and pages and screens, um, whatever. But there's there's a lot of crazy statistics from Dr. John Lieberman talks about uh, how how many kids, like 80% of kids by the time they're done with high school have measurable eyesight problems, whether or not they're using corrective lenses. And so when I was 14, I got diagnosed with stigmatism. I wore glasses. I didn't really like wearing my glasses. I didn't like being the glasses kid. Right. Um, and I noticed it did improve my vision, but it gave me headaches. I really didn't like the headaches. I know that people say that you get over that. Uh, some people do. Some people get headaches persistently. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, I didn't wear the glasses very much. So I kind of eventually phased that out and forgot about it. And maybe my vision wasn't perfect, but it was still enough to see. So that started getting worse. Uh, also in the high school, in weight training classes, uh, I would notice that whenever I did workouts, like pull-ups or things that involved the upper back area, um, I would have these really intense migraines. Mm. Um, that my, like my face would turn purple. I would be, my head was throbbing. It was, it was horribly intense. Mm. And I couldn't do many pull-ups. I couldn't do much upper body training because of that. And I didn't know what it was. My uh, my PE teacher didn't know what it was. Um, so I just thought like, I, I don't know, I was just a kid. I didn't even think about it. So also around that time I got pantsed, uh, in front of a whole class of people. So like, and I was, I hit puberty very late. So I was very underdeveloped. Oh, and no. so that, that was an that was an experience that, that like, I, it was kind of, it's kind of a little bit traumatic oh, as yeah. my, as my self image and yeah. people making fun of me and stuff for that. So like, so all those things, so start, things started to happen in high school that really started to detrimentally affect my health. Yeah. And, um, but so I was in the Navy after high school and the Navy things only got worse. I started noticing that, um, either I was, either I was playing games in my free time in a dark room or, if I was on deployment or on the ship, I was on watch in the combat room, staring at a bright screen in a dark room. And over time, my vision started deteriorating even more to the point where I couldn't even see words on pages anymore like I used to be able to. I would, I would have to squint and, and look really closely, and I wouldn't be able to make things out. And that was, that was pretty sad to realize that you know my vision was getting worse. And, and I knew, even not knowing anything about uh, lifestyle medicine at the time, I knew that it was because of the way that I was using my eyes because I was, you know, always playing games or I was always looking at screens. Um, not everyone, uh, eh, some people develop eye problems, vision problems from things that are not nearly as, as intense. I think I have a kind of hardy body and I had to really torture it in order to develop these conditions over time. Um, but yeah, so you're so young to have those too. Man. I know. So most of these health problems, uh, people think that I'm lying because in this in this video um, that blew up on TikTok, I was talking. I just mentioned eight health problems that I had. Most of those I had when I was 21 years old. Um, and um, so I had so snapshot of me at 21. My vision was deteriorating. I, I should have been wearing glasses, but I was stubborn and I wasn't. Um, I I had acne, really bad acne that I could not figure out how to get rid of. Um, I, uh, let me think, I, I don't have, I'm on the list of things in front of me. Yeah. I, uh, what, what, what else have I been talking about? I started developing hearing loss. My hearing got really bad. That's right. Um, so when I was on an aircraft carrier, we had jet engines taking off day and night all the time. And I also liked to smoke cigarettes at the time. So I was often under the flight deck, exposing myself to the jet noise. Mm. Um, so all of these things basically just like chipping away at my health over time. And, um, I couldn't work. I had to be very careful with workouts because I got migraines so easily. So basically after I got out of the Navy, I had this whole host of health problems. I was really extremely depressed. I didn't know how to hold on to the will to live anymore. Mm. And it was, it was a really difficult time. Yeah. Um, so what I decided at that time was either I was going to, I was going to just give up and die, or I was going to figure out how to overcome this. So I went to the VA and they tried to give me Prozac for my depression. You know, they said, oh, you don't have PTSD or anything. You're just depressed. And they tried to give me Prozac. Yep. Luckily, uh, my cousin was dating a holistic healer at the time. And she said, do not take that medicine. Yeah. So I didn't. Good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So that was that was the first good decision that I started making to turn my life around. <laughs> was 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 finally not listening to something that the doctor said. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I also had an alcohol problem um, where I, I could not I could not stand being sober. It was like that was kind of the only reason I saw it to be alive was to be in some kind of intoxicated state. So yeah. I was in a bad place mentally and physically. Right. Anyway, so um, basically. I found out around the same time. So around the time I was like 22, 22, 23, I started finding out about uh, holistic medicine, lifestyle medicine. And I heard about a doctor called Dr. J Jacob Lieberman, who has, uh, he has an FDA cleared device called the iPort, which he's used to heal people's eyesight. He, uh, he was an eye doctor in optometry school. And he would had a practice of meditating daily. He had always worn glasses since childhood. He had a reading problem. He would fall asleep when he was reading because his eyes would get so tired and they wouldn't work together well with his brain and they wouldn't work together as a team. So he was, he was meditating daily and realized one day that he could see the entire room crystal clear and he could see himself. And so he was having an out-of-body experience, but he didn't know what it was. But what he did, what stood out to him the most was that he was seeing with complete visual clarity since the first time he could remember yeah. and when he came back to his body from that he wanted to understand what was going on so he went to and he was in optometry school at the time and he was doing research so he went to the phoropter which is i think the device that optometrists use to measure your uh, your visual acuity and he found that his vision had improved to a couple levels above 2020 vision wow and Yes. So, so the major breakthrough that he made there was realizing that you don't see with your eyes. Yes, your eyes are physical cameras, but we are conscious beings embodying this human template. We're, in, we're experiencing reality through the wiring of the human system, but we are conscious souls. And so the fundamental experience of that consciousness is that we are an energetic body. And so we have an inner sight. If you've ever fallen asleep or you've been in that state in bed between sleep and awake, uh, being awake, then you may have seen that you can see the room, you can see the bedroom. It's pretty common, but most times people experience it, they think that they're imagining it. What they're actually doing is they're completely tuning in to their inner sight and they're seeing without their eyes. Wow. So this is something that, this is how people are able to see with astral projection. It's how yeah. people are able to see with remote viewing. And it's how you, it's also this, it's a similar vision to um, what you're when you're in a dream. The only difference is the dreams you're you don't have a, you're not tethered to your body and you have a complete um, disassociation with this layer of reality. So um, basically, yeah. So he trained this inner vision and he did eye training exercises. So he coupled it with eyeball training exercises. Uh, he had a device that he used at the time um, in order to basically train his eyes to be able to focus at different distances and work together as a team. So anyway, he was able to heal his eyesight and now he's helped thousands of people. So I heard his message and I started practicing astral projection more. And it's not really about the going out of body part. It's about slowing your brain down to the theta state so that that inner vision turns on. Nice. Okay. So that started the, the healing process of my vision. And now I have 2010 vision. I don't have any problems seeing whatsoever. Um, I also started seeing a chiropractor because I was getting really into this stuff. I was really into, I was starting to find out um, that, I was starting to find out that there are all these, all the suppressed technology. Cause at the time I wanted to be either a physics major or an electrics engineering major, electrical engineering. So I wanted to like be, I wanted to be cutting edge. I wanted to be like Tesla. And yeah, yeah. Um, I started finding all this suppressed technology. So I was like, well, if I go down this path of being an electrical engineer or a physical scientist, then I'm going to be, there's all this, all the cool stuff is suppressed. Like they discovered anti-gravity in the fifties with Thomas Townsend Brown, when he realized that by conducting a high voltage, low current charge through an asymmetrical capacitor, it produced thrust. So it produced, uh, there's a, he found a relationship between electricity and gravity. 
that could be used basically if you had something like a battery but the battery had differently sized poles like one size was one side was really big and one side was really small and you ran a high voltage low current charge through it it produces a thrust and so this was discovered back in the 50s wow. by the 60s he was doing classified experiments for the military um so i started finding out stuff like this in in my research i was doing a research paper in the college i was in i was like i don't think that i want to go down this this road because there's so many conflicts in conventional physics yep. where the laws of thermodynamics are violated and it's explained away with reasons that don't make sense to me. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that so probably like, started a lot of rabbit holes for you. <laughs> that was, that, yes. Yeah. So I was pretty obsessed for a few years. I was always just, I was taking in as much information as I could. Um, I was working in the semiconductor industry, so I had I was at a factory job where I only had to do something if a machine broke down, basically. So I had a lot of time to surf the internet and <laughs> gather information. <laughs> um, so the eyesight was one thing. I started going to a chiropractor. A chiropractor identified that there was a reverse cervical curve in my neck from hunching. They call it nerd neck in in colloquial terms. So. Um, if you see people, if, you know, someone that's doing like this, if they're standing like this, they probably have nerd neck Okay. because your, your neck is supposed to curve this way. And um, if you hunch a lot and you're used to uh, being on a computer with bad posture or playing games a lot with bad posture, then your neck over time, your vertebrae reshape into this kind of shape. So you like have this reverse S and in my case, it was my vertebrae were pinching a nerve that was cutting off oxygen to my brain whenever the area was under tension. Wow. So there's two things that the chiropractor taught me. Um, one was that <laughs> uh, what, what a healthy neck is supposed to look like. And two is that a chiropractor can't solve all your problems for you. You have to adopt lifestyle changes yeah. in order to affect real change in your health. So I have, I practice good posture as much as I can nowadays, as, as much as I can be consciously aware of it. And I use this cervical neck traction device regularly to stretch okay. my vertebrae and keep them aligned. And that's on my door right there. So I basically hang from my door and do 10 to 20 reps um, anytime that I'm feeling um, a kind of a tightness in my cervical vertebrae. Very cool, okay. okay. Um, yeah, sorry if this is too much information. I'm like, no, oh, I don't know not. Okay. I've got a lot of the same neck problems, so I'm just like totally like soaking it all in. And like, my vision, my vision sucks. So. Yeah, he's how, blind, how, basically. How often did you have to meditate before you started seeing those results? That's phenomenal. Yeah, how well, long of a meditation? What results? So I started I, the, with the eyes. Well, the first time I had that inner vision experience, it was about a month of meditating regularly. Hmm. I was meditating between 30 minutes and an hour a day. Okay, that's good. And I would. Um, I, I, I tell people if they want to train themselves to meditate, if they want to train themselves to turn on this site to practice astral projection. And it, again, it's not about going out of body, but the state of mind that you need to be in in order to go out of body is ideal for cultivating your inner vision and also mastering your ability to tap into that theta state and hold awareness so that you stay awake. Wow. So that's the challenge. Awesome. And you're, and you're so yeah, chiropractor. She has a new chiropractor that's just so talented, man. Well, I mean, that's... she does remote work. She, I mean, she's very remote work. What she's is very... that possible? So she, she's an... Well, she's a, she's not like a regular chiropractor. She's an energy healer. She's very okay. spiritual. She's very okay. intuitive, very intuitive. And um, we were in Laguna Beach working on uh, our book one time, and my I was out of alignment I couldn't lift my right arm I was in so much pain you know surgeons always wanted to do surgery on my neck but I never did it and um it was just debilitating and she and and this is before I knew she did remote you know I'd always gone to her in person and she was like let's try something and I could have like ran like 10 minutes like 15 minutes later I could have ran got skipped hop jumped, I was so like, freaking I, even though I was in this now world I, all the time. I was still I was so skeptical and then I saw that I was like how this is mind blowing because everything really is energy. It's incredible. You need to meet her. I feel yeah, like yeah, y'all. She's like in amazing. Austin. You need to meet her. Really? Yeah, yeah. I feel like you need to meet her. Yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all would click like crazy. Yeah. you're on the same same path. Yeah. Okay. For sure. uh, so, what about your hearing, dude? How'd you heal your hearing? Hearing, healing my hearing was kind of an accident. <laughs> <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't know that I could heal my hearing. 
Um, but that was probably my worst sense was my, my hearing was so bad. It was so bad. I, I, like I said in the video I made recently, I pissed off so many uh, times the people that I was dating because I couldn't hear them. <laughs> so, uh, my last ex-girlfriend, she, she was like, she would regularly be like, oh my God, I shouldn't have to repeat myself so many times. You should be able to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like she got so upset and then it, it put me in a place where like I was scared to um you know ask her to repeat herself so I would just stop asking her to yep. repeat herself even if I had no idea what she was saying but, <laughs> oh, yeah my, my hearing was pretty it was pretty bad especially for a relatively young person and yeah. uh, I had to ask people to repeat themselves all the time so my hearing just healed itself within the last year and a half um from practicing it for I, I've been practicing lifestyle habits. So healthy lifestyle habits. And the, the strongest practice that I do regularly is a Qigong practice called the Mao Shan Five Elements. Mm. So I want to learn feel, this. I, I would love to teach it. That's what we're gonna go into at the uh, at the yes. workshop that you guys are having. Yes, so, we are. So yeah, it's it's not easy. It's not easy because you have to. Uh, it's it's it really highlights the boundary between your ego and your spirit, because the ego wants to quit. The ego wants to um, end the suffering and stop. You know, the ego wants to stay weak. It wants to keep you weak. The spirit can hold this indefinitely. That's how this Navy SEAL guy that I was telling you about. He was able to hold this for three days. Is because. If you believe that you can and you allow your ego to step out of the way, then you can hold it indefinitely. The challenge is staying out of the monkey mind and staying in your soul, having full wow. presence in the body. And as soon as you stop having presence and that monkey mind starts taking over again, then you're going to say, oh, I can't do it. My muscles are failing. You know, yep. I literally physically can't do it. Well, yep. at the end of the day, that's bullshit because like you said, everything is energy. Uh, um, so you can hold it indefinitely as long as you can stay connected to the soul aspect of yourself. So Qigong just practice. Just we thought the awesome, ceremony uh, couldn't get more intense. Right. Ah! That's awesome. <laughs> Say again? I said just when I thought the ceremony couldn't get more intense. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, yeah, tell us how you got into Qigong and what you're doing with it now. Uh, I would like to... Uh, wrap up one more thing that I, that yes, I really for it. okay sure so I uh I mentioned the being pants in high school thing because that caused a lot of shame in myself oh yeah. and it manifested as ed at the age of 27 so and what actually really started uh, erectile dysfunction. oh sorry yeah I could I couldn't get it up my young energy was limp so yeah, well, um, dude, that's first of all, we live in such a conditioned society of like, especially in men, of like ego and having all we have to that pride and ego. So that that's such a traumatic experience. I couldn't imagine, man. So yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was that experience that was the seed that was planted, and then it was having a girlfriend that if I had any delay in performance, that she would get very upset and um, angry at me. So it just. Basically, that was the, the the nail in the coffin that caused a complete sexual system shutdown, mm. where I had I didn't have blood flow to the area for a long time. I had it. It was a total shutdown. I I felt numb. I couldn't even feel it. Wow. So yeah, and I went to the urologist about it, and I said, hey, you know, I really she's gonna leave me. I really need to figure out how to get this problem taken care of. And he said, oh, just take Viagra. And I said, well, she doesn't want me to take what? Viagra. And he said, oh, just don't tell her. Take take Viagra ten times, and then the next time, just just don't use it, and you'll you'll be fine. Well, that didn't work out for me, because wow. when I didn't have the Viagra, I didn't work. Right. So, wow. So I started getting tantra coaching. I paid a lot of money to start getting tantra coaching from an amazing uh, tantra coach. Her name is Sarah Rose. She used to be based in Austin. Now she lives in New York City. Um, she helped me a lot. She helped me completely overcome that problem. And uh, at the end of the day, I thought it was all this. I thought it was this nutrient deficiencies. I thought it was blood flow problems. I thought it was because I used to smoke and all this, all these things. Yeah. It was an energetic issue. All of these things, all of these health problems, except maybe the, 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 the vertebrae, all of these things were energetic issues at the root of them. 
And it was learning to master my energy and better connect to my body with my mind and spirit that healed these conditions. And that's what you'll never hear from a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. That part I of your, love this story. That part of your story's got to be out there more because there's so many men that are afraid to talk about that stuff that are so shamed yeah. that need hope that don't think they have it. That's a huge right. part of your story. Gosh, for men, I really want more people to know about that. That's yeah. so cool, man. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem talking about it because I know how helpless it can feel. And uh, in, in Taoist practices, you know, we believe in Western society that uh, as you get older, you know, your, your equipment gets less and less effective. And that's not true at all. In Taoist belief systems, actually, the older people get, the older practitioners get, the more connected and the more um, mastery they have over their sexual systems. So actually, the older they get, the longer they can last, the, the harder their erections become, the more control they have over their entire systems. Yeah, so the, the opposite idea. of our Western society, who the, the older you get, the more you get polluted and eat poisons. Yeah. And all yeah. that. You're just living in sickness for a long period of time, and it builds up yeah. and collects, it, it culminates into what you view as an incurable condition. But it's really just you've been you've been sick and unhealthy for so long that it's you've you've gotten to a point that it's it's a long road ahead to get out of it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Well, man, that's 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 epic, and that's such a huge part. I can't wait for our uh, people to hear that because we've never had anyone speak about that out of nearly a hundred podcasts. So that's that's a that's a powerful one right there, man. And no one's ever really we've never had anyone um, speak upon like qigong, and it's right. interesting because I don't know much about it, but I've been very drawn to it. Same. Like before you came into the picture, like I've been drawn to it for a long time, but didn't really know why. My higher self's probably like, "Bitch, you need to do this," you know. <laughs> um, and it's just so exciting. Like, I'm excited to learn this from you. I really am. I'm, I'm excited to teach it. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm enjoying this conversation right now, too. So I appreciate all the, the, the interactive uh, support and feedback. This is really awesome, guys. So yeah, for sure. Like uh, dude, just the beginning, man. Just yeah. the beginning. You're, you're starting to take off. And now we're, we're grateful to connect with you before mm -hmm. you really take off so we can take off with you <laughs> yeah absolutely and, and to a lot to of cool people yeah you're gonna meet a lot of new cool people it's gonna yep. be cool yeah yeah our community is awesome and there's some really really amazing people coming to the ceremony that were that are going to be awesome to introduce yeah. you to okay sure uh i would like to answer your question about how i got into qigong yeah yes. let's do it sure okay uh so i was very privileged to meet one of the best healers in the world um, his name is Alexander Krakolinik. He's from Austria. And he he teaches um, an internal martial art called Empty Force. It's an advanced form of Qigong. And it is, it's you can find it on YouTube. People know it as contactless self-defense. And uh, I, I knew him. We were in an online community. We had a spiritual community online uh, that no longer exists where we were learning energy practices. Um, and so I connected with him. I saw his YouTube videos of what he was able to do. People would be running at him and he would be able to just put them I've on the seen floor. YouTube videos. That's, yeah. one of the first, that's one of the videos that, that was, that wasn't the first, but it was one of the first times I started following you. You were doing yeah. this video with this guy and you were like throwing him around. I remember yeah. that. That was so yeah. cool to watch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, it's empty force. Um, there's, there's different forms of it all around the world. Uh, Indonesia has Tanaga Dalam. Uh, Russia has lube key. There's different forms of it. Um, there's also a Japanese version that I forget the name of, but um, each one is a little bit different philosophies. But the, the basis of empty force is it's a heart centered consciousness. You open your heart, you go into love and you completely resist all resistances. I mean, sorry, you completely release all resistances. So the idea is you need to be able to have someone running at you, trying to attack you and feel absolutely no fear and nothing but love. Wow. 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 Because fear creates separation and fear separates us yes. from the truth of what unity consciousness is. We all exist in oneness. Everything exists in overlap. And we only perceive separation where we believe there's separation. So when, when a practitioner is able to go into their heart, open up and feel love and someone is trying to interact with their field, 
then the person that is in love has control over the outcome of that situation. So that's wow. the basis. Of that. that is so cool. Love it. I've well, never, makes sense. yeah, I've ne I've always been intrigued about this stuff. You know absolutely nothing about sure. it. So that's awesome. <laughs> Hey, I'm happy happy to talk about it, man. So this this guy Alexander Krakolnik, he uh, he, his nickname is the Crake, um, like the Kraken, um, and he so he travels the world teaching and healing. And I had luckily a high paying job at the time when I was living in upstate New York, and so I flew him in from Austria, and for, he stayed with me for a week and taught me a lot of what he knows. So. It, it gave me a major activation, a major upgrade. It completely emptied me out energetically so that I could feel everything. It allowed me to experience a level of self-awareness and presence in my physical body that I had never known before. And I was able to pick up on people's energies without even trying to. It, it, it got to be almost like almost like problematic because I would I was working with a team of five or six people. And every time one of my coworkers would come close to me, I could feel their energetic muck inside my own system. Yeah, I'd be like, know. oh, you need to take care of that. You know, oh, yeah. like, well, come, well, come here with that. <laughs> I know exactly what yeah. that's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those empathic abilities come right out. Yeah. 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 I, I deal with that. I'm learning to manage it better. At first, it was like, what the hell is this? Uh, wow, why is she getting in such a bad mood? And then over time, I realized she's interacted with someone that yeah. had uh, holds on to a lot of or something no, but negative. we could be in like Home Depot or right, like right. World Market. Out of nowhere. I will start sweating profusely. Like I'm in a hot yoga class if I'm around someone whose energy like Oh, is, yeah. It's, wow, it's, very uh, sensitive. Wow. Yeah, very sensitive. So I yeah. totally, I resonate. We have a lot of similarities in your story too. So I, I, I resonate with all this and I definitely feel like I could learn even more from you. So it's really exciting to meet you. Well, absolutely. I, it's such a pleasure to be talking right now, guys. I can't, I can't express my gratitude enough. This is amazing right now. Oh, awesome, I mean, you've got to be teaching this to everyone though. Yeah, man. So like, what are that's, you, like, that's what my are you dream. To do? Honestly, yeah. what's been holding me back is fear. I've been afraid of judgment from people that are skeptical i've been afraid of oh yeah uh, we deal with that a lot. <laughs> exposing myself you know and uh because i i've seen what alex has to go through i've seen the hate that he gets it's and part of I've territory been, it is part yeah. of it it comes with it yeah. i even yeah. have family yeah. that just doesn't understand you know part of my family doesn't understand you know any of this and so it and the david you know you've probably seen a lot of the triggering posts he makes speaking truth and people attack him did people it, that are supposedly spiritually woke and into plant medicine community will attack yeah, him it's crazy yeah. yeah it's like the uh this anything that threatens the system the way the system is created exactly uh, yeah. the, the systems created programs they've implemented on indoctrinated people not judging them at all but they've created systems on the indoctrinated people to attack any anyone yep. that threatens their pharmaceutical indoctrination based mm -hmm. control measured uh religion school systems whatever anything that, that uh, attacks that yeah that's part of it dude but i'll tell you what um one thing that helps so much is community and we're so excited to bring you really more into the magical community because everyone there's so non-judgmental supports each other you're gonna we're, we all deal with that you're gonna deal with that and yeah. especially you oh, got yeah. such, you got such a great way of speaking and you have a, a lot of gifts so the world needs those gifts you have they're so gonna we'll, outweigh it yeah they're gonna outweigh it for sure and i don't know if ayahuasca is ever calling to you because it's not unicorn and rainbows but the one that i hated it every obviously every minute who loves it but but I will say, I cared very deeply about what people thought about me. I was a people pleaser, especially my family. I always wanted to please them, and they were very controlling. Of Super me. And and ayahuasca ripped that out of me. Yeah. And I don't care. Magical would have never been birthed if I cared. You know what I mean? Like after ayahuasca, I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let's help heal people, you know, and heal ourselves in the process and speak our truth. So I'm just gonna plant that seed. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I'm also grateful for um since I've started really making a lot of content and being fully open with my story, I've started getting a lot of love and hate. And uh I'm really grateful for the hate comments because yeah. it's really helping to temper myself and uh yep. train myself to not be in fear. Um or try yeah. to run. Oh my it. gosh, we follow this 
that's we follow this one uh her named sam ramsdale before she was famous we did an interview with her uh, on it was, it was one of our first 10 or 15 podcasts she does she's on tiktok she's hilarious and she does hilarious stuff she only had like i don't know ten thousand followers she has 1.5 million now in the in the past just seven months but man we talked to her the amount of amazing. the amount of hate she gets on TikTok is insane. Because I cannot so, look at her posts and see how you could find anything negative to say to her. So I'm sure I just uh, the reason I say that is like I've heard TikTok can be the most brutal. I don't know a lot about. Yeah, TikTok. she talks about yeah, the children I, I, of TikTok. I agree, <laughs> and that's but that's why I'm I'm making that. That's why it's my main platform right now because I feel that's like awesome. I feel like the audience on TikTok needs this more than any anywhere else because they're yep. so. It's literally. 15 to 60 second videos. So the attention span is worse than it's ever been on TikTok. <laughs> right. And so it's a, it makes sense that I'm triggering so many people because I'm, I'm shattering, I'm threatening yeah. to shatter the entire comfort, comfortable suffering reality that they know. Right. And, so, and, and the people, the outpouring of love and support also that I've been getting from people that are so grateful that I'm offering them an out. I'm offering them a way um, a, a push of belief in themselves to to be able to heal themselves to be able yeah, to it's, it's go against the stories that they were told exactly it's, it's, it's really inspiring so i'm happy keep, to do it that's right keep focus on those people because I mean, they need it i mean think of all the people that have spent all of their money and their time and energy on like hearing no after no after no to eventually they lose hope and they feel like this is this disease and my body is a disease and it's incurable and all these things and then they come across a video of yours and it gives them hope and then they claim their power back yep. and then they get freedom and like that's amazing and you have an amazing purpose for sure yeah 100%. thank you guys and y'all too y'all are doing a really great thing with this thank you awesome man well what uh so what are you doing now what bring us up to speed on what you're doing now in your life so now you so I, I i mentioned that i've been um, afraid of exposing myself uh so like that fear and that was that was part of this like this layer that i that i recently tapped into and and transmuted within a week ago good um and but so how i was hiding from from fully coming out with my message by by hiding behind other people like i was so I, i've been studying internet marketing for the last three years and I was hiding behind uh, other spiritual people that like I was gonna, I was doing their marketing for them. Mm, wow. And um, yeah, and re the most recent one was, uh, was a, a guy in California who has his own um, energy school business. And so I was trying to help him with, you know, getting his business off the ground. And for a lot of reasons, it didn't work out. It just wasn't really aligned. And I think that both of us still had inner work to do um, for me, it didn't feel in alignment to, um, bring out somebody else's message when I didn't feel like it was super helpful to people. Mm -hmm. yeah, like it didn't yeah. really solve a problem. You know what I mean? It was kind of like this, it was a, it was a product and a course that was made that didn't, it wasn't really meant with an end user. It, it wasn't made with a problem in mind. So it was like, what problem does this solve? It doesn't really, it kind of kind of like helps you with a spiritual awakening maybe, but it doesn't solve a specific problem. Right. So it was very difficult to market that and it didn't feel aligned to try to sell that to people when I didn't feel like yeah. it right. was- Right, you can't believe in it. Yeah. So um, for those reasons, the business didn't work out. And so recently I've been over here at my house. So I'm in a situation right now where um, I'm now starting from scratch and fully embracing, you know, myself and everything that i've been through and just coming out with everything uh no holds barred and just um uh yeah i, I don't i don't have anything to lose anymore so i might as well put everything out on the table that's awesome and when you take that leap of faith you're going to put things into motion and the universe is going to support you they're going to bring you the right clients or whatever it is that you're looking for so yeah hell yeah yeah awesome. and that's what it that's what it feels like so i'm really actually super grateful for this hardship experience right now like um i'm behind on my house payments and like i may be about to lose my house maybe about to sell it we'll see i don't know but like uh you know basically no income right now um no job prospects i have a two-year resume gap so it's like uh i'm really grateful for this situation because it, it caused me to go through such a period of discomfort that i had to embody 
again, a very deep level of self-awareness and take control of my destiny instead of trying to help have someone help me with it and trying to have someone like do it for me. And I have to do everything now. And I realize that and I see it and I, I, I feel everything that I need to do. And I'm fully comfortable with uh, going with the flow and not knowing what the next day will bring um, because it's a great test of the mastery that I, that I preach. Faith. Yeah. And you got all these gifts, man. So oh yeah, uh, there, there's not a doubt, man. It's the just divine timing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you come to the ceremony, when you, I'm going to, I'm going to recommend that your intention be clarity around like your purpose and this and business, abundance. right? And prosperity. And the meditate and affirmate that I've written is very special for this. And I can't wait for you to experience it because I think it's going to really help you take off. I've had a lot of business people that come in that don't necessarily need healing, but they need like epiphanies, clarities around their next big adventure or whatever it is. And they've received that. So go in with that intention. And I am very confident that you're going to take off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, awesome. where can, uh, so if anyone's listening, cause we're going to post all your links, whatever you want us, we're going to put it so people can contact the book with you. Um, sure. just from speaking to you and your energy, man, we couldn't recommend you enough. Right. Um, what, where can people find you if they're just listening auditorily? Uh, they can go to my website, maxwellreader.com. Reader is spelled with R, all E's, R E E D E R. So maxwellreader.com is my website. Uh, from there they can book healing and coaching sessions. Cool. And by the way, if you want to learn empty force, that's something that has to be taught in person. You cannot teach that online. And if you ever take one of my workshops, then uh, you will learn why it, it has to be taught in the 3D. There's no way to teach it over the phone or on Zoom. So, but MaxwellReader.com has my healing and coaching session links on there. And for free help, there's a Facebook group called Energy Healing and Telekinesis, where we have a community of people that share demonstrations and we share knowledge on how to empower the body and mind to become better energy healers and telekinetics. That's awesome. And uh, shoot those links over to me and I'm gonna put, when I publish this, I'll put those links everywhere. So and they on can TikTok, find those is it just your first and last name on TikTok? The TikTok is the, the Max Reader. Got All it. right. Love it. Awesome, man. Dude, thank you so much for your time. We're grateful to be connected with you. And we're excited for this relationship, man. We're excited to get you going with our ceremony and see uh, have you have our people experience your work and uh, go from there. Thanks again for all your time. Yeah, because you never know. There could, when we move to like five-day retreats, we might need you to want you to host a workshop, you know? like So sky's the limit for you. Absolutely. I would love to. That's my dream giving workshops because that's the best thing that i the best thing that i ever learned was empty force and the best thing i could ever teach anyone is empty force because it's a it's a life how-to manual to stop struggling and experience peace all the time wow Wow. who doesn't need that jeez right (laughs) sign me up awesome (laughs) hey you have a great rest of your day grateful to be connected with you man have happy healing yeah happy healing i appreciate you guys so much have a a wonderful day thank you you too bye